Hello and welcome, my name is Teresa from the blog and YouTube channel freetoflower.com where I share our life on our European farm, from scratch cooking, raising animals, gardening. So if you're into all of that with a European flair, make sure to hit that subscribe button and follow along on our adventures. In this video, I am going to be sharing with you what we are up to on the farm this summer. And let me tell you, these are some of the less usual things that you will see. First up, permaculture gardening. And I know that a lot of people do permaculture gardening, but to us, this was and continues to be completely new territory. We actually hired somebody to help us make a plan for our garden, which we've already partially put into effect. You can see that on the left-hand side, we've got our raised garden beds with a wattle fence running all around. If you would like to learn how to make a wattle fence, it's actually surprisingly simple and I love the look of it. I have a whole blog post, I will link it in the description box below and maybe you can add that to your garden design. But on this particular weekend, we were working on a duck pond because yes, ducks are going to be part of our garden as well as some irrigation channels that run through the orchard and around some of the other garden elements. We are brand new to this. My husband spent a whole weekend doing this and we are still in the process of putting this into effect. And I'm so excited to give you guys a full tour when we're done. Okay, next step, and this was new to us again, we incubated some ducks. We've done chicken incubation plenty of times before, but this was our first time incubating ducks and it was so fun. So here you see us taking out the part that the eggs sit in. I don't even know what it's called. I know that some of the incubators in the US look a little different, but this is how we do it in Europe. Uh, we keep them in the little rack for, I think it was 25 days with duck eggs, where they get rotated every hour and a half. The incubator maintains a specific temperature and humidity level and then for the last three days of the incubation period you take them out and you just lay them flat in the incubator like my husband and i are doing right now and then you wait for your ducks to hatch we waited and waited and we were starting to get a little discouraged when all of a sudden on like the fourth day i believe we saw little ducklings peeking out and our first duck hatch was actually successful which was so fun i think we got a total of 10 ducks out of around 30 or 40 eggs which is actually a really good hatch percentage they're doing great they are so big right now and if this is something that you would like to dip your toe into i will have a whole blog post all about how to hatch ducks i'm going to put it in the description box below we found it to be much easier than chickens and we actually had a much higher hatch percentage than we usually do with chickens. And also, just look at them. I mean, ducklings are so cute, they have to put a smile on your face. got a new kitchen appliance and I try to keep kitchen appliances to a minimum because kitchen space gets crowded fast but we were in a need of a really good blender and after a lot of research I opted for this KitchenAid blender. I had a Vitamix in the past, I actually still have it in our storage unit in the US but I didn't really love how tall it is and the look of it and so I decided to go with a brand that I love for a lot of other things. I have so many KitchenAid items. And let me tell you, so far, yes. I am really pleased. The look is great. It kind of matches the feel of my farmhouse kitchen. The functionality is awesome. It's all very heavy duty. It's great for grinding up tougher things as well as just simple things like smoothies. But what I love most about it is that it's not an eyesore. If you're also on the lookout for Blender, I'm gonna link it in the description box below. onto some cooking in the vein of slightly more unusual things. So I made some wild boar meatballs. 
You heard right. I'm actually not sure how common wild boar meat is in the US. I know you can buy it at some farmer's markets and I'm sure you can order it online just like anything and everything. In the Czech Republic, wild boar is pretty common. We have plenty of wild boar roaming the forests, damaging harvests, damaging forests actually, really ruining the landscape and they multiply pretty fast. So we try to keep them at a limited number. Well, not we, the local hunters do. There is a specific position called a hunter. Not everybody can hunt here, like in the US. And so wild boar meat is pretty abundant. There are some traditional chip recipes, but we love easier things. And we also love things that the kids will enjoy eating. And sometimes check recipes can be pretty involved. So I decided to try making meatballs out of our wild boar. And let me tell you, it was a giant hit with the entire family, kids included. Just like all game meat, wild boar can have a little bit of a specific taste. I find that it is less so than, let's say, deer meat. But you can definitely taste it. And so good seasoning and a good sauce is really key which this meatball recipe has white wine sauce and I absolutely love it. Another little trick that I got from Czech cooking is to add a little bit of sweet jam into your sauce, preferably from a wild berry. I used wild blueberry jam, but you can use fig jam or raspberry jam, possibly blackberry jam, blueberry jam, all of those will work really well. The recipe is pretty simple, just like everything I make. And I like to double up and make extras and then freeze them for those busy nights when food needs to get on the table really fast and I don't really have time to prep. If you would like the full recipe, I'm going to link it in the description box below. It's up on my blog. And I don't know about you, I love watching people cook, but I could never follow a video <laughs> and make a meal. I just always need to see it visually, open on my phone, or print it out in order for me to make the recipe correctly. So I'm just gonna link it in the description box below and you can pin it for later or go ahead and make it right away. If you're wondering what on earth I'm pouring from that giant jar, this is my jar of chicken broth. I make chicken or beef bone broth at least weekly for cooking and also for soups this is such a great hack i actually give it to my kids to drink um, instead of water sometimes if they're hungry or if i feel like they just need a little bit of extra nutrition and it's such an easy thing that you can make yourself at home after roasting a chicken throw the bones into a big pot and simmer it for a couple days and you'll have a delicious bone broth to serve with everything One of the things I absolutely adore doing in the summertime is riding our horses. Our homestead actually started as a horse farm when I was a competitive horse rider. That was the original reason for all of these animals being here and it all started with a single horse. And so horse riding is something that is really close to my heart. I started as an English rider, I did dressage and I did show jumping. I represented my college team, I competed on a local level, I never took it, you know, professional, but I was a semi-professional rider and it was so much fun. And as the years went on, I switched to western riding and quarter horses. And that is what I love doing as a form of self-care and when I have a little bit of time to spend outside of the kitchen and without the kids and without work. I just love to saddle up my horse and either go for a ride or ride in our arena for a little bit. Here I'm riding my horse Texas and the other horse in the arena is actually her baby. Her name is Kitty. She is about a year old and she was having a little training session of her own as we were riding as well. It was a new challenge for her since her mama was right there and she was not allowed to pay any attention to her and had to just continue working on her own but it was definitely a great thing for her to practice i find that the busier i get with 
my businesses, my kids, my homestead, the more important it is for me to find something that fuels my soul and that I can almost escape with. Otherwise, I tend to get really close to burnout. I work and work and work until I can work no more. So I am working on, <laughs> working on introducing more things like this because my soul just loves taking a breath. Back to the kitchen. Something I'm spending a lot of time doing in the summer is rendering beef tallow. Believe it or not, beef fat is seen as waste here in the Czech Republic, so it is normally just discarded. I got a bunch of it for free from a butcher, and my freezers are full of it. And as we are starting to butcher our meat birds, I am in desperate need of freezer space. So I've been going through my beef sweat as fast as I possibly can to create some space. So if you want to make some of your own beef tallow products, whether it's balm or candles or soap, or just have some tallow for cooking, this is an easy way for you to do that. Cut up all of your beef fat into little chunks, the smaller the better. Put them in a large pot, cover with filtered water. Next, you want to add in a couple tablespoons of salt. The salt will draw out any impurities. And then you will bring the mixture to a light simmer. Now, you will want to simmer it for a long time. Usually, this process takes me about 10 to 12 hours, sometimes even longer. When most of the fat has cooked down, you will still see little pieces on the top. Those can perhaps dissolve a little more if you keep it going, but in my experience, there's always some left. So you can use a slotted spoon to lay them off or strain through a cheesecloth. I usually do the slotted spoon first and then I use a cheesecloth and strain it into a metal bowl. It's really important that you use a metal bowl, not a ceramic one, because one of the steps is, well, let's say after you strain through your cheesecloth, you will place your bowl in the refrigerator and your beef tallow will harden. You will see that in a moment. For you to get it out of the bowl easily, it is just so convenient to be able to press on the sides a little bit and the tallow will just pop out. What will be left on the bottom is a layer of water with the impurities. You want to discard that. You can flip your chunk of fat over, see if you can scrape off any impurities from the bottom, and then repeat the whole process. So insert back in your pot, cover with water, you don't need to add any extra salt, and you can render it a couple times just to make sure all impurities are gone. You'll be left with tallow that is just as white as this one here, it has zero smell, and you can go ahead and freeze it or use it for your DIYs. Till next week, 